there guys and welcome back to the channel so today we have a really interesting flight controller it has a lot of crazy new features that other flight controllers don't actually have so it's all one flight controller it can take up to a 6s input it does have osd it has five uarts it has a gyro which you could switch out to a lower gyro if you wanted to this is the icm the sensitive gyro if we take a look at the bottom we have the receiver it's rxsr i think and um, it's running f port right out of the box already pre-programmed here and it does have osd it's an f4 microcontroller unit take that into consideration that it's an f4 now let's take a look at some of the interesting things here now they have really done a lot here first of all they've added a lot of filtration for your escs as you can tell here that's one huge plus not only that if you flip it over they've left for you pads so you can set up some sort of a special tantalum capacitors to even make your quad run even smoother which is pretty remarkable actually it's actually really well thought out. i'm surprised they fit all these things on here and this thing has a 3.3 volt regulator, which is an LDO regulator, which is something you want to see, especially because that's going to be powering up the gyro to reduce noise. And you have a 5 volt regulator and as well as an 8 volt regulator, which is really nice. And we're going to get into that in just a tiny bit here. Now, if we take a look at the OSD, they're using the proper filtration, 2 tantalum capacitor, 47 microfarad. And from my testing, from building my own flight control, you guys haven't seen this one just yet. Uh, that is something that you, you kind of want to see. It's 2 tantalum, 47 microfarad capacitors is something really good here. So that's a, that's a huge plus right there. If we take a look at the camera part, we have, first of all, up top, we have the video ground. So both of them should be grounded. Your camera on the left and your VTX on the right. It doesn't really matter, but they have to be grounded here in this area because of the way this whole thing is routed. On the bottom here, we have two 8 volt regular two 8 volt power. So these would power up your camera and VTX right here. And this is where this gets interesting. Uh, here we have smart audio. And here we have camera control. Isn't that crazy? That is just insane here. And if we go one lower, we have the video output, which will be to the VTX and the video input for the camera right here. So that alone is a really just well thought out little corner right here, which I'm, I'm just really excited for. And check these pads out also. I mean, that is just beautiful. I really like seeing that. Probably they wanted to reduce cost. That's why they didn't install them. But you could bring in your own huge tantalum capacitor. Tantalum capacitors are pretty expensive, actually, especially this size. And make sure because most of them come rated up to 5, 10 volt maximum. So you're going to be buying some probably some really expensive, beautiful tantalum capacitors that go here. I'll have some link down below. But, you know, just 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 these pieces right here are, are just absolutely phenomenal. And they did a hell of a job here. Now, let's flip the board over here and take a look at this thing. And you were like, oh, there's no current sensing. But you're wrong. This is using a Hall Effect current sensor. And it's right there, which is just superb. I mean, they've just taken this to the next level here. Um, I just I just hope it's going to perform absolutely spectacular. Now, there's also something pretty interesting. As you can tell, the gyro is obviously removable. And I thought, I was like, well, I thought this might have a dual gyro. Or you can add another gyro if you wanted to here. But this is this pad here is for ESC. Uh, so I think they're probably in the works of developing an ESC, which connects with this type of ribbon cable. So I'm really curious to see how that is going to happen. And if they do partner up with uh, Airbot, it's going to be a really interesting uh, stack here. You, I mean, you have almost everything set up in here. You have the PDB, you have the flight control, you have the OSD, you have the the receiver, uh, current sensing. It's just it's just remarkable. And the filtration and an 8 volt regulator. I'm I'm just at awe here. And not only that, they even provide you with five UARTs. And the S port pad would be this one right here. And then here we have RX1. And on the bottom we have TX3 or S clock for some kind of a I IC square I2 squared or I2C protocol here. And on the right side, we have the SDA for the I2 squared. You can also use this as a RX3 and a TX3. And if we go down, and the third one down is going to be RX6 and TX6. So it's going to be UART6. And if we go down one here, this would be 5 volt USB. So if you wanted something to take 5 volts while the USB is powered on, this is where you would put it. And then here we have the S bus. So if you wanted to put S bus, it's right there for some reason, but you already have your receiver built in. But anyways, here's S bus right here. Here we have the buzzer positive and the buzzer minus. And on the bottom, we have the normal five volt pad and we have the LED strip control here. So this is the signal to control your LEDs. And if we take a look at this, how would this be actually installed here? All right, so the orientation of this is as follows. The USB would be to the right and the, the normal default configuration, and the battery would be to the left here. All right, and we have pads motor one, 
So this is where you would put your signal from your ESC and obviously the positive and the negative here of the power of the ESC. And you could also ground your ESC signal, which I highly recommend. I used to always not do it, but I highly recommend from a lot of testing and I'm still gathering enough data to come in and show you that test. And here we have the ESC telemetry, which will be on RX4 if you want to enable that. So yeah, there's motor one and then here would be motor two and then motor three and then motor four. So this is how you'd want to install it in the default configuration here. And as you can tell here, this is really interesting. They give you a huge pad here for a 3.3 volt uh, coming from the LDO regulator. So that's really nice. And here they also give us another big five volt pad for some reason. And here's another ground one. So if you wanted to have, you had more than one wire and needed more power, they just went this route because there's only so much they could fit on here. And uh, I'm just still at awe with everything that they have just, just set up on this. It's just remarkable actually. Now let's flip this over. We see a huge line of filtration going in right there which is something you want to see you always want to see the more filtration the better the things are actually going to run we have some caps here so overall this is supposed to also act as basically a big capacitor for for your quad also if you're running some kind of shitty ESCs and uh, this will reduce the, the headache of actually FR sky because if you were to stick some crappy ESCs like super crappy ESCs and um, try to run on a, on a sensitive gyro and if it wasn't filled out filtered out great then you would have issues and everyone be like oh it's a piece of crap flight control but actually you just had really shitty ESCs uh, but here they're doing a lot I mean look you even you could even put more uh, capacitors here here these are really nice I mean I, these are really nice I'll have a link to some capacitors that you could install right here this is just gorgeous to be honest I'm sorry I'm just drooling all over this um, so yeah it is running the ICM 20 so it's a sensitive gyro the 2060 eight uh gyro not like may think i think uses 2060 uh 02 uh gyro this one's the eight i haven't tested the eight just yet or i did i i can't remember maybe on the dollar c they had it also but i'll double check this and i'll come back in a later video so this was this is definitely going to go on a build i can tell you that right now now if you wanted to bind your receiver uh you have a little hole here which you can go in and click the bind button. Oh, it's very tactile. That's really nice you're gonna know that you clicked it i mean let me see if I, i'm just gonna put it next to the microphone so you can hear it here So yeah, that, that just sounds beautiful. And you also have your boot button, which is kind of hidden. It's right there. So that's your boot button. And the setup of how uh, the, the, the receiver is talking to the flight controller is already set up inside. So you don't have to worry about that. All you have to do is just bind it and just connect your ESCs and your camera and VTX and you're good to go. I mean, obviously a little bit of tuning and setting up your arms and stuff, but I, I really like this. I mean, FR Sky took their sweet ass time making this. I can tell you that for sure. And they're stating some crazy cool things on, on, on the paper here. Uh, obviously more caps to reduce power noise. So that's really nice. They had that in mind. Built in hall current sensor, built in professional level PDB. I don't know what that's supposed to mean, but they're also stating about the resistance that it's really, really low, uh, which is something you really want because you, you want the lowest resistance as possible. And you might say, well, why do I want that? Well, so the current could flow a lot better. That's one thing. But again, the more resistance you have, the hotter the board will get. So you want the least amount of resistance as possible in such a board since it's all in flight control and all the current is passing through this board. Now, when I used to do my testing, I've done some testing with the thermal camera on a Matic F405 CTR. And what I noticed is this area right here in in less than like a second it will hit 100 degrees celsius celsius not fahrenheit and then like in two seconds later it just drops down so uh that's just it's just crazy in this area what, what, what goes on in this area so you always try to avoid this area for something that's super sensitive in my opinion especially on one flight controls but we haven't seen many of those issues so it's not nothing to worry about just yet but maybe later on when they get more powerful uh, we'll probably see these issues we'll probably kind of have an idea why uh, these issues are occurring such as something desoldering itself because it gets so toasty in that area and uh, overall it's looking like a really nice flight controller and um, I will definitely build this soon I really want to take this out and actually go test it and again yeah one thing it doesn't have soft mounting well it actually doesn't need soft mounting since the gyro is already soft mounted that's it guys let me know what you guys think of this flight control down in the comment section and um, well that's it I really hope you enjoyed the video and I'll leave a link to everything down below. You can check those out. It's a great support channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.